Hi, I'm Freddy and today I'm continuing my map of a new Pict inspired landmass in my world building project. If you want to see how the map got to this point, be sure to check out part one, but let's get straight into it and complete the map of Aber. First thing on the agenda is to add that overhang here and make this a little bay because I want to increase a couple more islands over this way to uh, keep the back a bit more visually interesting. I know it's not that big of an overhang but my idea is that it's going to you know, lead into more islands rather than being the only uh, part of the land. So if you look at like the Tanuk uh, map I did, some of these lead into islands. So like this is all islands rather than just one continuous thing. Uh, there is obviously like this peninsula here, but like this isn't connected. Uh, so I'm going to be adding like continuous islands that follow in an island chain rather than it just being one part of the landmass. So islands around here. Uh, <laughs> islands around there, obviously not looking like that, but uh, they're going to continue off around, I think here perhaps, or maybe even from the north, because if you look at the base map, uh, this is basically Mercator uh, projection, uh, this entire map, um, Arinstia is wrong, uh, but uh, I'll fix that later on. So there is room for more northerly islands, so this chain can continue northwards and slightly here, which, yeah, looking forward to it. I've drawn an island shape to add to the northwest of Aber, kind of inspired by some of the islands in western Scotland, like uh, the Outer Hebrides, but uh, with a more, you know, more messy, fjordy end. These islands are somewhat inspired by like the Faroe Islands in terms of their shape or, and distribution. Although I think they are far further north in terms of like their uh, latitude. I think it's latitude is uh, that one. Uh, I'm not sure what they will be called or if they'll be really attached to Aber in terms of like being populated. Maybe there'll be some whaler stations there. I can imagine that kind of thing, especially like you know, you see uh, whaler uh, stations being like sort of unearthed in like the permafrost of uh, northern Norway on some of those islands. So I feel like that that can have, you know, the kind of thing here, or maybe even like uh, they'll be home to isolated monasteries, similar to how um, in some of the Cape Hadon islands, like this one, especially uh, Saint Janusz's Island, uh, there's an isolated monastery there for the uh, Tetrad. Um, that plays into a story that I have that's set in the modern day uh, when St. Janusz's Island uh, basically gets nuked but uh, that's kind of a different story in a completely different time period to this medieval uh, era of, um, of Thar. North of the mainland of Eber is this small collection of islands which is called uh, Yesgril and uh, here is the the home base of the sea drakes of Yeskril, which are kind of like a raiding piratical band of uh, mainly giants but also some humans too and they raided quite a lot of the northern coast of Eber, uh, including uh, Duitu and uh, Banhir. So at the Battle of Banhir is where uh, Duidamak, the, the third Duidamak, was un uncovered he was discovered fighting against the sea drakes of Yeskril. So I'll just write that here. And hopefully uh, more of the islands will get proper names as we go on. I think actually um, in the sort of journeys and campaigns of Duidamak, which will be depicted here, uh, Yeskril might actually be raided itself. Uh, kind of similar to how in the uh, History of the Kings of Britain by uh, Geoffrey of Monmouth. King Arthur is, uh, I'm pretty sure he is uh, depicted as invading Iceland at one point, uh, so maybe it could be in that kind of vein. After looking through my notebook, I found 11 locations uh, in Nordland, starting in Kassern, 
Lower Sutherland, Neuern, and Iceland. I'm not sure if I'm going to add the Puka settlement of Thurkuthu to this map, as I think uh, Puka settlements would have diminished by the fourth millennium to almost obscurity. Uh, so instead I'm going to focus on the mainly human settlements in Nordland. I'm also not sure if I want to put the, uh, the regional provincial names here. Uh, I could do that, but uh, I don't want to sort of like... I want to make it clear that all of this is kind of under one kingdom, apart from the city-states of the uh, Northern League, which are sort of quasi-independent. But uh, I'll add those 11 cities here now. I ended up adding a lot more locations than I was originally intending. Uh, added not only the ones that were in my notebook, but also ones that I found on my computer from uh, long, sort of abandoned maps. I also have included the ruins of Felkathu. I decided to have a little icon for a point of interest or ruins, which I'll be adding to the legend. But I can use that to sort of populate these mountains as well, as these were the site, these mountains were like the heartland of the uh, the giant Jodorak Empire before humanity came. So, and even like uh, some Eblak and uh, Goblin Kingdoms, such as like the Stone Claw uh, Kingdom, and I think some Goblin Republics as well, in this uh, gap between mountains. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be doing for uh, the region around Froarhaven. Um, gonna have to probably come up with some location names, but I know Elhana is around there. And uh, so it looking quite populated. Uh, sort of don't want it to be too busy, but again, I don't want it to be too empty. But I am gonna have to do a sort of similar amount of location plotting for Aber. So that of course means coming up with a lot more names. So it could be time consuming, but at the end of the day, it's fun. I've added a lot more settlement icons to Aba, and oh my, that's quite a lot of names to come up with now. Well, better get to it, I suppose. Took some time, but I've added all of the place names, I'm pretty sure, of the location icons that I placed down, but I'm not done yet. I'm probably going to be adding more locations over here, possibly from the remnants of a giant kingdom, as well as the sort of exiles of the Grelig men that I mentioned last episode. And I might also add some isolated whaling stations like there, and possibly some monasteries and other things spread around. I quickly uh, went checked how far away Rinstai is, and if you look at it uh, using on here, I placed it where it, where it is, and Arenstire is actually too far away for anyone, especially from the Ash Coast here, to actually settle in Aber. So it seems that it's just going to be the Abans, the Gnomes, Giants, and Grelig men. But maybe some Kaleys had settled along these islands to the Kingdom of Crow. Uh, I'm not sure how I would actually pronounce that, but it means blood in Scottish Gaelic, which uh, I thought was interesting. So. Now I'm going to be working on some of the more, uh, the political reasons why uh, the third Dwedemak is going on his voyages, trying to unite the kingdoms of Aber and trying to wage war against the Sycontralac kingdoms of Nordland and possibly Dombier as well. And to do that, I'm going to attempt to uh, make some dynasty maps maps? Dynasty diagrams. Getting two into maps now. So I've spent a little bit of time working on a family tree of the main kingdoms in Aba, and I've created this expansive family tree. It's not quite finished yet, it's still rough and ready, uh, but uh, it's got all of the main kingdoms on here as well as their connections to uh, other families on the mainland continent. Uh, yeah, I don't have all the coat of arms, but I've made some coat of arms for the Kingdom of Kor and the Kingdom of Crow. I've had uh, the coat of arms for some of the other places, you know, already made, so I was able to put them there, but uh, yeah, everything else is pretty new. Uh, I'm quite happy with how this has turned out. I mean, 
spent about maybe a day or so on it. Uh, you know, which is pretty decent. I have progress. I I feel. Uh, if I spent more time on it, I probably could have made it even larger. But I think I've done a, you know, I think I've got to the point where I want with it. Uh, uh, so I'll just give a rundown of some of the conflicts in the present that will sort of inform uh, the stuff that's going on the map. So to start with, we have uh, Giriod of Obag. Uh, and uh, this guy, he is the Lord of of the island of Berlin, uh, which is that big island in the southeast, and uh, he has uh, connections with the Kingdom of Nordland through his mother, you know, directly linking to the kings of Nordland. Uh, he is the descendant of uh, a long line that used to be uh, kings, there used to be a sixth kingdom in Ava, but uh, their, their crown was taken by the Kingdom of Ait, which they do have connections with here. And this links to the next issue. So uh, King York of Ait, he lacks any heirs. Uh, he has uh, a daughter, Lonsetta, uh, and uh, she is married to the, uh, well, was married to a previous king of Nar. But that means the uh, next claimant to the uh, the throne of Ait is actually uh, Giriod, because Giriod's father's dead. He's the firstborn son of Connell. So if you follow the family tree, he is definitely up there as being one of the claimants of the kingdom of Ait. So the next problem, uh, I say problem, but these are like the things informing like the uh, the political context of uh, of the map. So the next thing is uh, Galoc uh, the second king of Nar. Uh, he is basically he is a child. Uh, he, his father died, Galoc the first, and then was succeeded uh, succeeded by uh, his son, Galoc's uh, older brother Girk. And then Girk was uh, killed in an ambush uh, in the territory, so leaving. Galloc II, only about uh, 10 years old, to inherit the throne, so definitely not a very strong hold over the kingdom. And uh, instead, there is regency, and you know, it's not uh, not looking too stable for the kingdom of Nar at the moment. Now, the next thing is the kingdom of Kor. Now, this one is far more stable. There's far more uh, members of the family uh, than uh, than otherwise. And uh, so, uh, the thing with uh, the Kingdom of Kor is that even though uh, Urad has a very uh, strong hold over his throne, the kingdom itself is plagued by pirates and raiders. Like you saw, uh, I mentioned earlier about the sea drakes, you know, those giants. Uh, basically, yeah, giant pirates <laughs> in all senses. Uh, so uh, Urad needs to make sure that uh, his shores are kept safe, because otherwise uh, bad things might happen to uh, to the kingdom and uh, his vassals like Dui uh, Tu and uh, cities like Corbrook. Now, the next kingdom, Kingdom of Burr, uh, this one is uh, on the southern uh, sort of frontier of the giants. And so while the King of Burr, Taloric, uh, he is uh, able to you know, he's doing fine, uh, he's stably reigning, uh, but he has few allies. He doesn't have that many uh, people outside of the Kingdom of Burr to actually support him. So unlike uh, many of these other kingdoms, that they have uh, marriage ties with other people, like other noble families from around northern Sycondrel. So, you know, Urad, for example, is married to someone from Bialt, which is a major city in northern Monbil, whereas in uh, the Kingdom of Burr, they're not really, uh, they don't have that many ties, uh, aside from uh, some people from Kingdom of Crow, which is, you know, quite close to them, but uh, they, Taloric is currently facing, uh, you know, issues from northern giants, gnomes, and maybe even the Grelig men. So he has to re he has to retain 
and uh, protect his borders and he's kind of struggling to do that uh, so yeah he's got problems now the last kingdom in Aba, uh, in Aba is the kingdom of Crow and so Uradek of Crow is uh, beginning to look for um, more allies on the continent rather than uh, among the kingdoms of Aba uh, so he's especially looking to towards uh, Kaligurd which is, uh, you know, well, is noted on the map. Uh, so he's looking towards Kaligurd for allies. Uh, you know, seen with uh, his marriage to uh, Tuamia of uh, Solaka, which is uh, an island uh, far north of uh, Kaligurd, kind of near Aber. Uh, so Uradak is uh, more isolated compared to uh, some of the other kingdoms. So while Burr just uh, doesn't have many allies. Uh, Crow is sort of looking outside. Uh, so, what is the role of Malban, you know, the third Duidamak, in all of this? Well, um, like the idea of the Duidamak, like the reincarnations of Duidamak, is that it's sort of perceived as um, a way to sort of like fix problems in Aber, sort of keep uh, the kingdoms in balance. So, like, you can think of it like, uh, you know, Avatar Cycle, that kind of stuff. But I want a far more active role, sort of like a servant to the kingdoms, rather than a um, uh, rather than a overbearing force. Uh, the third Duida Maxorf has to uh, operate within the system. Uh, so he Duida Mac, uh, the third Duida Mac, Malburn, uh, is from the kingdom of Kor. Uh, so that means he'll first be interacting with the king of Kor, Urad. Uh, so then he would have to, I guess, move on to all these other places, uh, try and make sure that things are stable, especially when Giriod, who has a claim for the Kingdom of Eight, uh, he is definitely looking towards Nordland, and there is going to there is going to be conflict between Nordland and the Kingdom of uh, Kingdoms of Aber. So I'm looking forward to uh, mapping all of this out and uh yeah showing how uh Dwidemak and his travels and you know fights and all such around the continent uh around the northern psychondrill and all that i'm looking forward to uh seeing how that all plays out i've begun to add the notations for you know how this journey is going and how the story is progressing i've decided to also add a little uh number next to uh, next to the uh, description just so that you know what order it's in as uh, unlike the Tanurk one you know the order is uh, less it, it, it does it's not as obvious as uh, you know as before but uh, yeah so the Dweeder Max journey starts in Van Heer goes to Corberig, Yesquil, to Krath, Kuthplan Mofail, where he is defeated by uh, Giriod of Obag. Then he flees uh, to uh, the Kingdom of Crow, where he joins a mercenary company. After the third Dwidmak joins the Company of the Ring under the alias of Finn of Breck, he goes to Phalak, uh, where uh, the company liberates it from the pirate lord Angrak Goldfang, who is in fact a uh, Krelling. Which is a, a non-human, uh, kind of like a lizard man type thing. Uh, but then after they liberate Phalak under the request of uh, the Kale Lord of this island, they go to Berberig, where they are told by uh, King Toloric of Burr to face Vinthrimir Manbane in battle. And Vinthrimir Manbane is the king of the giant city of Dolosenin. Or do looking in, I don't know. Uh, so that will be where uh, Dwe uh, the third Dweed Mac will go, you know, go next. And uh, yeah, I kind of want uh, him to be going all across Saber in his travels before, you know, finally facing the, uh, the armies of Giriod and Northland. What must be said is that the road through the Kingdom of Burr to the uh, city of Dolokanen will not be uh, very easy, <laughs> will not be a very easy one. After all, you've got to go all the way up these mountains. 
when the company of the ring gets to Dolokhanin, uh, Duidamak, still under his persona of Finn, actually prevents the conflict between uh, the company and the giant armies. Uh, he uh, sort of mediates the conflict, puts it on hold a sort of armistice between Burr and the giants, but as a result, the company of the ring are only paid half by King Talorek, since the company of course did not actually fight any battle, as Duidamak uh, put it to a stop. So uh, he is kind of pushed to the uh, side of the uh, company, so whatever uh, valour he gained fighting against the Krelling pirate lord was sort of lost, and eventually Duidamak straight up leaves and uh, brings alongside him some, uh, you know, p uh, some newfound allies like Sinan of Asath, and Duidamak goes towards the kingdom and island of Crow where he petitions the king Uradek in uh, Crowbale to intervene in the war. And uh, so he's going to go down to uh, uh, Bokorog and uh, alongside the prince, the uh, king's brother, Prince Rotri, uh, they're going to sail towards Nordland and reap some havoc. I've expanded the journey of Dweedmak uh, towards the Nordlander coast when he's raiding it. So he starts in Elhana, he captures uh, Lord Yehan, who is uh, on the family tree, somewhat uh, related, or, you know, in the family of uh, the Kings of Crow. But uh, he's on the wrong side, so he gets captured by Duidamak and uh, eventually ransomed. Uh, so the idea of, um, not necessarily a moral idea, but his idea is to raid the uh, Nordlander coast pillage the cities and the uh, the Northern League, take as much money as possible, and try and disrupt the shipping and navy of the Nordlanders so they can't uh, keep uh, supporting Giriod in his conquest of Ait. So um, from uh, Hukran, he is uh, raiding all of these main cities, including, as I said, the Northern League, until finally he is uh, shipwrecked at Medelsund when uh, leaving the uh, the cove there. It's like a um, very small port, uh, like, I'm thinking something like Mausel or something in Cornwall, uh, and he's wrecked on the uh, on the hidden rocks in that bay. So he's forced to uh, flee, and Dweedemak is the lone survivor, so he actually flees inland around this area, where he uh, teams up with uh, Klaus Armstark and uh, a band of outlaws under the, uh, the pseudonym Angus, Bl uh, Angus Blacktooth. So uh, they eventually steal a ship at Schnau and uh, then their journey will continue. Next, Dweedemak goes to the island of Whirl and uh, on Whirl he meets with uh, other Aben princes and they're going to go to Sastalamur. Uh, Sastalamur is the ancient capital of uh, Altenheim. Uh, well, Altenheim was here, but it is the remnants of a vast giant empire which used to span all across northern Sychondral here. So uh, Sastalamur is, you know, a shadow of its former self, a decrepit city, much like uh, the City of Glass of uh, the ruins of the City of Glass on Neighbor. Uh, but at the ruins of Sastalamur, uh, Duidamak and the other Aben princes and privateers, they're going to be uh, raiding the rest of Nordland from there, similar to what uh, Duidamak was doing at uh, Hukren, but they want to uh, goad the uh, Nordland navy to uh, come meet them in the Straits of uh, Savotan. Uh, because, uh, you know, they want to uh, stop Giriod from uh, getting the support of the Northlander navy. So, m while one contingent was destroyed at Elhana, there are other, you know, key ports which, uh, even with the raiding, they weren't able to destroy the whole thing. And some were helping Giriod ferry his army across into Kingdom of Ite and also supporting it with, uh, you know, shipping, and all such. So, 
uh, Dorita Mac's aim is to entice them to come from either the other Nordland ports or to uh, retreat from Ava down to deal with him at these ruins, you know, literally occupying part of Nordland and, uh, yeah. And eventually the uh, Nordland fleet meets the Aben fleet in the Savotan Strait and the Abens defeat the Nordlanders. And afterwards, once uh, that has been done, they, oh, the Abens keep Sastalamor uh, and uh, that tiny peninsula, but Dwidamak uh, proceeds to uh, St. Geriot, uh, St. Geriot's, which is the, uh, the base of a holy order of knights, which is uh, both supporting Giriod and uh, sort of uh, aligned with Nordland too. So uh, Dwidamak is going to uh, sail there and, well, deal with them, shall we say. He's going to uh, uh, pillage the, the temple there and uh, make them send a message to uh, Giriod's forces on Berlin and say, uh, saying that Dwidamak wants to meet Giriod in battle. A rematch from uh, when, when he was defeated, when Dwidamak was defeated at Mufail. And I think we come to the final uh, text box in the map, and that is where Dwidamak has his final engagement with Giriod, where he defeats him along with uh, his fleet which sets sail for the ruins. And Giriod and his plea to uh, re, uh, rebuild his uh, ancestral kingdom and conquer Ait has, uh, has failed. Although Giriod has a brother and he also has a son, and so does that mean the war is completely over? Well, probably not, but it at least means that Dwidamak, the third Dwidamak, and the other kings of, uh, of Aba, including the king of Kor, Crow, and so on, they support uh, Lonsetta of Ait, uh, her claim as the queen of Ait over Giriod, and so uh, that would lead to a, well, a campaign of liberation of uh, the rest of Ait against Giriod and the Nordlander forces. Uh, this is only the very start of the third Dwidamak's life. From his uh, discovery, you know, when he was discovered to be the third Dwidamak at the Battle of Banhir, to his first battles against the giants, his defeat against Giriod, when he became a sellsword for the Company of the Ring, fighting against lizard men, pirates, and uh, preaching peace between giants and man, before finally inflicting great damage against the Nordlander ports, and taking a uh, giant ruin, a Sashgramer. Sa Sasta Sastaramur. I'm saying it so wrong. And then finally, inflicting damage against the Order of the Fallen Star, and fighting Giriod in a final battle off of Brannan. This is the first couple years of the third Dwidamak's life in his battle to uh, for the rest of Aber against Nordland. Uh, I really enjoyed making this map and uh, I'm probably going to be adding a couple more uh, sea names here and there, a couple more Firth names, but I'm that's pretty much it. I, this is Ava and the Northern Continent, and I really hope that you've enjoyed watching my process, uh, seeing me ramble on about some of my ideas and mess up pronouncing the names that I create, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed exploring this uh, part of my world building project. Uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya!